name is Gordon Bernard Ledoux. I, um, I was a custodian at a school in Pembroke, Ontario. I was watching TV with my son and my daughter, and uh, my vision sort of went, uh, it was like looking in a crack mirror, crack glass. They were all sort of, and I thought, well, there's, there's something wrong here. They took me in, and uh, the doctor there said I'd like you to go for a, a CAT scan. She came back about uh, two and a half hours later. She, uh, she said, Mr. Leduc, I believe that uh, your cancer is going to take rain. I'm uh, John Moore. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I happened to have a requisition for an MRI. I kind of thought something was starting to happen because halfway through the MRI, they decided to do uh, a contrast dye. And around that time, uh, I started to think, well, some of the symptoms I've had with my hearing loss and vertigo and so on, I guess there is something going on. So I have a little bit of being in the right place at the right time. So, so I woke up, uh, woke up after knee surgery, and a day afterwards, I found that uh, I had a brain tumor, and you know, from that point on, everything started to roll really quickly. Well, Cybernite is a form of radio surgery treatment, uh, and radio surgery has been around for a long time, for several decades. Uh, radio surgery treatment is designed to treat very small uh, intracranial targets uh, with very precise beams of radiation, and we're able to spare adjacent normal brain tissue. For a number of indications, it's become the treatment of choice. For example, for acoustic neuromas, uh, it's really become the, the pretty much the standard of care now for most acoustic neuromas uh, and select uh, skull based meningiomas and pituitary tumors. Um, the advantage of cybernife over conventional radiotherapy over surgery is again, you're able to treat these small uh, targets uh, within the uh, brain uh, in a non invasive fashion spare the normal brain tissue. So the first step in preparation for cyberknife treatment is actually making the mask and do a CAT scan. We would then also do an MRI. The mask, uh, I had to come in and uh, they just put me on the table and uh, the man that was in there, he, uh, he just put like a, felt like a piece of cloth over my face. I didn't really realize that they're going to put some type of formable mesh over me and kind of push it down into your eyes and your nose and around your head. On a workstation we then bring the MRI into the CAT scan to use the image set. Uh, then the team, uh, typically myself and the neurosurgeon John Sinclair, would then do the contouring of what we need to treat and the structures that we need to avoid so we can get a customized cybernite radio surgery plan for the given patient in a given tumor. For the actual treatment itself, again, it can be anything from one to up to five treatments. Uh, they're outpatient-based treatments and typically take about half an hour to an hour for a actual treatment itself on a, for a brain cybernetic treatment. Uh, for the actual treatment itself, the patient would then come in, lie down on this couch, we put the mask in place to keep them still, and then the cybernetic itself uh, will uh, rotate about the patient it's so basically a giant robotic arm, the cyberknife, and it has a radiation gun on the end of it. And the, the cyberknife will then rotate about the patient and deliver a very precise beam of radiation in on the tumor to ablate it while sparing the normal tissue structures. Uh, while the actual treatment's happening, again, the patient won't feel anything. There's no burning or cutting or anything like that. It's, a, again, a non-invasive procedure. This is typically, again, an outpatient-based treatment, one to five sessions. So if the patient's coming for three to five sessions, that'll be completed within a one week. Uh, it's a single session, again, it might take half an hour to an hour. After treatment, again, some of the patients will maybe need some free medication. So again, if I'm treating a, a brain metastasis or a, a recurrent high-grade glioma uh, with cybernite, uh, we often would give the patient some free medication with steroids to help reduce the risk of any temporary brain swelling. For most benign tumors we treat, such as meningiomas, pituitary tumors, or acoustic neuromas, uh, we don't need to usually give any free medication for those patients uh, because we don't risk of temporary brain swelling is very, very low in those cases. Most patients during treatment don't feel anything. Uh, rarely, a small percentage of patients would have a funny smell or a burning sensation. Uh, that's rare, again, under 5% of patients. If a beam passes through, like the olfactory groove, um, then some patients, uh, so again, the beams are directed from a series of directions. Sometimes we will be bringing in beams that pass through the olfactory group, for example, and some patients may get a slight funny smell or a funny taste as a result of that. 
I'd say 90, well over 95% of patients will get a funny feeling during treatment and they just have the feeling that they are wearing the mask. That's all. You can hear the, uh, you can hear the uh, robotics moving behind you and you can hear it picking up the odd piece off and on, but I just kind of drifted away and listened to the music and it was fine. You don't feel anything. It's all easy. And I now feel really confident that everything's going to work out for the best. I think things got found uh, a little bit by accident, I suppose. It was kind of serendipity that it all happened in two weeks. And, you know, here I've had my treatments and on we go. That went out to cyber night. Excuse me. Without the cyber knife and, and the excellent care that I've had here in Ottawa, I, know, I really believe I wouldn't be here today. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing really well and it's, uh, it's amazing.